Welcome to the Retail Tech Podcast, where we talk about the full spectrum of technologies and implementation used in omnichannel and online retail. Make sure to subscribe to our newsletter at retailtechpodcast.com, and we always look forward to your feedback. Advisor to the uh, grocery, drugstore, and convenience business. How are you today, Randy? I'm wonderful. How are you? Fantastic. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. So as you mentioned to me earlier, the grocery and drugstore business is a tiny business, which is only $1.4 trillion in the U.S. I was really interested to learn more about how you're seeing technology change the lives of the grocery store and the drugstores and things like that. So maybe you can tell me a little bit about that and then go into how SAP is actually helping. Sure. So the I'd say the biggest change in the last 10 years is the consumer is showing up, whether it's an online visit or uh, a mobile visit or walking in the front door um, with more technology in their hand than ever before. They have more access to information. They have an expectation of interaction that they that has never existed before. Um, so that that fact has is now permeating through all of the business processes at a, at a grocer. So store operations, supply chain, merchandising, financials, HR, all those kind of back office business processes have seen that fact impact the way they think and and how they react to the consumer. That's changed a lot. How is that received by the C-suite and how, how are most people reacting to it or addressing it? So the, the, the reaction is really relative to um, the, the vision and strategy at the C-level. And if you look at the C-level in most traditional grocers, that role is a, a, an individual that came up, you know, was a store manager, uh, was a regional director, was a super, you know, category manager, worked their way to the top of the company. And their context is store operations. Um, it's not technology. It's not, um, you know, that's not the first thing that they think about. How can I facilitate my business process with better underlying technology? They think about what do I got to do at my store to facilitate a better conversation with my cu- customer? And it's, right. so it's, it's foreign. It's a different message. And they really, the re- first reaction is not got to go solve it with uh, analysis. It's how, what do I, you know, I, honestly, it's I don't know, I don't know what to do with it right. because I don't think that way. So I think that's a very interesting and good way to put it is that they're focused on operations and probably historically the only connection they had to the consumer in the past was advertising. Consumer is going to come to the store and then from there on, this is where I do things and that model the interaction with the consumer is the major shift right now right well that the, that that ad that flyer that whatever it was right. um, was either a, an email blast or it was a piece of paper in a newspaper um, but it was never personalized at all um, and so their expectation is that when the consumer finally shows up at the store their customer service strategy is to hand that to the store manager, to the department managers, to the associates in the store. That is the way that they satisfy customers. Instead of what, what's available to them today, which is a, a whole plethora of ways to interact and to, 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 be, to constantly be in contact with the shopper instead of waiting for them to show up at the check stand in a store. Right. So what is SAP's approach when you talk to retailers? How, where do you start? <laughs> it's, uh, it's a difficult, uh, difficult. There's, there's really nowhere to, we, we start here every time. It really depends on the context of what the customer wants to talk about. If they're, if we're, you know, we're SAP, so we have really good at the, the infrastructure. We were good at that, but we're so much more than that today. So it really is, Honestly, my, my, my job, my role, is to show up and talk about the art of the possible. What could tomorrow look like? I, I always like to lead with, what if 90% of your orders 10 years from now 
arrive digitally before the shopper hits the door of your store, right? That's when, and that, that, that's, nobody argues with me when I say that because they believe that that's, that's a potential fact. But, but you, you probably want to pull that forward a little bit, say, and not say nine years or 10 years from now, three years from well, now. <laughs> I, try, I use 10 years so that it can be, they can, so it's they get more consu uh, digestible. They, yeah, because if, if I say three years, then like, I'll oh, forget it. <laughs> Don't want to talk anymore. But, but the point right. is, it's ten, if it's 10 years, there's a roadmap, that, that a journey to mm -hmm. get to that capability, right. to use that information to really connect with the shopper, right? But if it, it's, it's, it's a long time, but it's cap they can do it. It's feasible. But then we stop, and then we go back to, okay, what, what do you gotta do? What's the first thing you have to do? And you have to identify the places where that digitization, right? It's a buzzword and everybody uses it, but it really means everything's in the system. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a forecast, or it's a master data element, or it's a personalized offer to a shopper, or it's analytics that help you predict what the shopper wants tomorrow. Those are all things that happen, but they can't happen in Excel right. or in some piece of paper mm -hmm. or in a newspaper ad. Or in a report somewhere on a clipboard. Exactly, they, they, you can't run a report and, and digest it and then take action. You have to digitize it so that you're going from analytics or insights to action in the same process, same step. And that, that, that delivers, so tomorrow, you know, I can make all kinds of predictions, right? But if you think about the iPhone, right? It's to, today, it is way more than I expected it to be 10 years ago. When it came out right. 10 years ago, I, 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 if I would have predicted anything in 2007, I would have been totally, I would have shortchanged it because mm -hmm. it is way better than I ever imagined it to be. So you gotta say that to yourself. I can imagine 10 years, but I'm, sh I'm, I'm coming up five years short, most likely. Right. But when you build that digital infrastructure and you use, the, 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 that becomes the mindset, then when things change, you can change with them. It's not disruptive to change. Today, right. that CEO looks at his infrastructure. Well, he never looks at his infrastructure. But he says, I need this. Right. And the CIO looks at his infrastructure right. and goes, I can't do it. What exactly is the infrastructure, different pieces of the infrastructure that they need to be digitizing? Well, so it's so in, in SAP um, world, mm -hmm. we think end to end, right? Okay. We, don't, um, we don't chunk it up when it comes to the platform. That, that's really the message, right? We've developed a platform that can manage all of the business processes from customer relations and personalized offers to store operations, uh, to warehouse inventory, to purchasing and relationships with supplier, to managing costs, to managing retail, optimizing promotions. All of those business processes um, all fit on top of this what we call the HANA platform. And that gives us a real-time access to information. It gives us a platform that lets all of the processes plugged in to it to gain access to it immediately and to make decisions. So we move from reporting and transactions to insights and action built on that platform. What is HANA? HANA is an in-memory platform. So we've gone from your traditional row and columns database mm -hmm. where there are you know, conjoined in sections and, and to get that information out of that type of database, it takes a ton of processing. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's so much processing that what they, you have to do is aggregation. So you add things up and look at the aggregation, not at the individual details. With HANA, it's an in-memory platform, so it is. we no longer have rows and columns. So it's basically no SQL, is that how you can describe you can it as well? describe it that way. We don't ever aggregate. Okay. We a act on the very bottom of the data, um, and we don't batch process. So we're instantly accessing the information and instantly transacting against it. That's really the differentiator. It's, it's analytics and insights and transactions all in the same place. What does it take 
for somebody that is running their business on all these tables and relational databases to change to this platform? That's that's probably not as small. Is it a how easy well, is it? We, we, we obviously because we're moved to this, we got to we got to be able to do that. Right. So part of the implementation strategy is to take your existing data structures and move and and transform them into the the columnar databases that we're using inside of HANA. That's one of the key innovations that's happening in software right now, right. is the change of the database. Yes. The fundamental change of the database. Right. So not just another relational database. No. Right. And that, 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 that leaves, that lets me interact with my shopper in real time. Right. I don't have to wait for the data to be aggregate and to put into a cube and then report it against, I have access to the transaction instantly. So when this, she shows up in the store, I, I immediately know she's there if she's allowed you know, the, you know, some permissions. But my, my associates know she's there. They can interact with her. Okay. Um, they can, if, there, if there's an out-of-stock, she can send a message to the selector. Transition to HANA. Um, is a more fundamental transition for the retailer and the, the abilities that it actually gives the retailer is to have immediate access right. to the data, right? Right, that and there's, you know, there's so many more things we can do. Like, like um, we've created a unified demand forecast inside of our business applications and, and that's the forecast. There's not a bunch of other ones in other applications. There, that, that unified demand forecast is embedded in the, the database. So when I need a forecast for my replenishment, for my assortment planning, for my promotional planning, for my pricing structures and strategies, I access the same forecast. I don't go put an algorithm in every single application and then hope they kind of sort of come up with the right answer. Right. I have one answer and it, I permeate the rest of the applications. Okay. That's just one example. That, that, that context is all over the place in right. supply chain, in store operations, in merchandising. You've got such a different view of life because you're looking at real time transactional data instead of aggregations. One other topic that I've been covering lately, which I think is probably close to you, is the Amazon Go store. It's a very interesting development, and I think it's, um, I actually applaud Amazon for pushing the boundaries and the envelope. Because ultimately, if we listen and we look and we learn, we can actually all become better for the consumer. Absolutely. What are your thoughts on that? Oh, it, it was, so I got to say this story. I was in a, I was in an executive meeting at a grocer, and when that Amazon video came out, and there were three individuals in that meeting that had ecom uh, accountabilities, and all three of them got texts from their boss, and all three of them left the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> to go for another meeting, <laughs> an ad hoc, right? You know, called meeting, emergency. Yeah. Session. So, so first of all, the, the concept is off the charts. It is spectacular. Um, there's a few flaws that I immediately, you know, mm -hmm. in my experience of running a grocery store, I had never one time had a customer take a product off a shelf and put it back on the shelf where it came from. Right. They don't do that. They put it back in the meat department, right? Or they drop it at the check stand, right? Or they put it somewhere else. So that that's got a little bit of a flaw in it. When you got sixty thousand SKUs in the store, something to work out. It's got there's <laughs> some stuff to do, right? But but regardless of that, right? The, the 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 concept that the consumer will give you permission to talk to them in real time and to uh, and to transact with them in real time. It's, a, it's not fantasy. It's not something IT people thought up or people like SAP to sell software. It's happening. Right. And Amazon, I like to say, Amazon is a technology company that's decided to sell stuff for a living. And That's true, it's they, true. They are not a retailer. Right. They, they're a technology company. And oh, by the way. That understands retail really well. They, well, and they've learned, right. right? They didn't start out knowing what to do. Right. They've, tested and tested and tested and tested right. and it's fantastic to watch them um, drive the industry I also like the way they they are they are we call it fear uncertainty and doubt <laughs> they are planting that at every turn so these guys are you know they're looking at it going oh my gosh how do I do that right I can't do that with my with my mainframe applications right right so so 
the, the, the recommendation that you would give somebody that's really starting to look at doing something that's going to last more than two, three, four, five years is to really look at the core level of how they handle data with the database. At, at, at that level, is you think where they need to start? That, well, that's the, the infrastructure right. start. But you also have to make money in the process, right? You cannot just do database transitions, right? right? Because that sets the foundation, but there's no money to be had there until you get to the next wave. So you've got to also do um, kind of joint pro projects that deliver business value. So you start with getting the infrastructure correct and maybe tackling master data, but you also, maybe you do, uh, you improve your web access. And you can't, a lot of companies are outsourcing things today. They're, 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 they're solving the problem by um, um, buying a one-off, right? I'm gonna give my e-com to somebody else. Right. But that's not the solve, because that's not long-term. Sooner or later, you're gonna want that back in. Because you want, at the end of the day, you want a commerce strategy, not an e-commerce strategy. You want to agree. completely connect your category manager and your vendor to the e-commerce strategy because that's where the velocity comes from to, that the vendor's looking for. So you got to connect them. And if you disjoint it that way, if you have an e-commerce solution and a, con and a back office or bricks and mortar solution, you're never going to put them together. Well, this is fascinating. Pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. I enjoyed it. Thank you.